Today we're gonna make one of the most known things about Sweden outside of Sweden. And no, nope, I'm not talking about IKEA, I'm not talking about ABBA, and I'm not talking about blonde girls. I'm talking about Gravlax. The original version when making Gravlax, you're supposed to bird the salmon underground because it's cooler there and that will help the process of the curing. Nowadays we use our fin, so that's what I'm gonna use. Here we have it. Gravlax, or soon to be Gravlax. And it's pretty straightforward. You mix salt, sugar, white pepper and some dill, put it in a cold space and let it rest for 24 hours and you're done. So hang in there and you will learn how to make Gravlax by yourself. And if you want to see more of these kind of recipes, hit that like button down below and that subscribe button. Really helps me out. I'm using Oreth Guiding, the Tore Vretmans cookbook. This cookbook is kind of hard to get actually. It's from 1967, so yeah, it's kind of hard. And for me, this is considered one of the Bibles when it comes to Swedish food. And Tore Vretman was one of the back in the days big influencers for Swedish food. And for a while there, back in the 60s, 70s, Swedish food was really unpopular. It was like peasant food. You wanted pasta, you wanted other kind of new dishes. But this beautiful man brought Swedish food back and made it kind of popular again. He had a TV show and he wrote several cookbooks. So, Tore Vetman, thank you once again. And since I'm gonna cure the salmon and not really cook it, it's kind of few ingredients here. Sugar, salt, equal parts, and then white pepper, after preference, if you like white pepper a lot, you add more. And also dill, and plenty, plenty, plenty of dill. I have this, but I have some more in the fridge and as well. And here I got a whole salmon, or half of a salmon here. And the ideal part to make a gravlax is here in the middle. The fat and meat ratio is really good over there, but I kind of like the tail as well. So I'm actually gonna use only half of the salmon, and other one I'm gonna use for another recipe. Let's split this up and put it in a container. And also, before we put it in here, these extra fatty parts that we can see over here, it's a little bit too fatty, so what I'm gonna do is just feel first, but then I'm actually gonna do a cut here. And of course, the salmon still have the skin attached, as you can see. And here we have our prepared salmon. Put it in the container here. And as I said, really few ingredients, sugar, salt, equal parts. If you wonder how much, as long as it's covered with good layer, then it's good. You're gonna remove the salt and sugar after uh, the burning process, so you can't really add too much. And if you want to have some reference point, this is maybe, I'm guessing, one kilo. And for this is one and a half deciliter of sugar and one and a half deciliter of salt. And also I'm using, uh, what can this be? Four pinches, five pinches. And uh, preferably it's nice to use freshly grounded pepper here, so this is why I'm grounding my fresh. And I like to have mine quite rustic, so I'm uh, going in with quite big slices here. And yeah, just eyeballing it, but something like that. A few nice big pinches and stir that together so the salt and the sugar gets nice and cooperated. And now it's time to cover everything and the salt and the sugar here helps that curing process. The salt will penetrate and remove the moisture and the salmon will firm up even more. And as I said, it's it, you can't really add too much here. Make sure it's nice and cooperated on all sides. The thing I'm gonna do now is a little bit new for me, but I'm trying this out, so bear with me. I'm gonna flip over the salmon here and put the stems of the cell in the bottom. So the idea is that stems is here and the salmon is on top, so the moisture from the salmon can leak through and uh, escape more easily. And this fresh dill I will use as topping after the curing is done. And the dill part is so important, without the dill it's not a gravlax, so make sure to don't miss that. Massage the stems a little bit so the oils and the essence come out from the stems. So what I'm gonna do is hold it up and then lay uh, the stems underneath. This will add flavor as well, but also a nice easy way for the salmon to evaporate its moisture. And we're gonna cover the top also with some of the spice mix. And let this sit for maybe 20, 30, one hour outside in room temperature so the salt and sugar melts a little bit. That really start the whole nice curing process. I'm gonna press down uh, with a container of some sort. The idea is to put 
something on top here and also I'll put something kind of heavy uh, on here. Why not use the mortar and pestle here? And what I'm going to do now is put some plastic on top of this and you don't really need to do this but I like to do it because it's less fish flavor in the fridge and also it helps a little bit to make sure that no extra bacteria goes in there. So some plastic on this and put it in the fridge. I'm going to put this salmon in the fridge and you can Already eat it from uh, five to six hours of curing. Preferably, I like 20 to 24 hours. The longer you have it, the more firmness, I guess, the longer it will last after its curing time. And I'm gonna put this bad boy in the fridge and uh, I'll see you guys in around 24 hours. There's a fun text here about this Gravlax recipe and the first educated doctor that was working in the north part of Sweden, Nils Gisler, was very interested in industrial fishing. He writes 1752, so quite a long time ago. That was his first experience with the Gravlax or grave fish is it only said so it doesn't say grave lax it's just said grave fish so it could be any fish pretty much cured fish so what i'm trying to say with this is that this is a really old recipe that is probably older than 1752 but this is what it reads in this cookbook well it's been 24 hours and it's time to check on the salmon okay you can see here that the color has changed and also the firmness and there's plenty of liquid have left the salmon as well. I'm gonna put some plastic here so it's easier to wrap the salmon up afterwards. The first thing I'll do is actually just to scrape the excess salt and uh, sugar off. So what we'll do now is to garnish the beautiful gravlax with plenty of fresh dill. You can't really add too much here. Just yeah, cover the whole beautiful thing with it. Pat it down. So everything has nice contact. And here we have it, Swedish gravlax. Done in pretty much the traditional way. Well, I didn't bury it, I, I used the fridge, but apart from that, yeah, looks beautiful. And if you got inspired or learned anything watching this video, please hit that subscribe button and the like button, and maybe leave it a comment down below. If you want to see more kind of this old school Swedish recipes, write a comment down below so I know, or another recipe if you like that, of course, as well. And guys, I see you in the next one. And he wrote, and I quote, Weirdly, this gravlax can be eaten by all, without any hesitations, even from the sensitive ones after three days, and sometimes even after five to six hours. So that's kind of fun, I guess. I guess someone cured it for three days back in the days, but I guess after curing for three days, it lasts quite a long time because it's really dry them probably and really hard and I quote again according to me five hours is too little and I prefer the salmon around 20 to 24 hours to seem lagom it's, that's a really Swedish word but yeah that's the way he like it and there's also something kind of interesting uh, that he writes in this cookbook as well he puts oil on the fish before which I don't do and maybe I should and also he fries up the skin afterwards in a cast iron pan which is really hot yeah it almost fries it black he said and uses as uh, garnish so that might be something to try out later but yeah that was the day's version of the older swedish cookbooks and once again thank you for vietman 